Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clayton Chick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clayton Chick. This is the beautiful outdoors. I'm trying to duck down right now out of the wind and get some lighting for the camera as well. The sun is coming up in about 20 minutes. I've already got the Eskimo Outbreak 450 set up, ready to go. I am about to jump in in what's going to be hopefully the search for a new PB lake trout. We're on the hunt. I've got two days right now, two days. This could be a one video thing. It could be a two video thing. No idea. I could catch a PB in the first five minutes. I could catch one in the last five minutes. I might not catch one at all, but we're going to put this video out regardless, even whether I catch two trout in two days, because I want everybody to see the highs and the lows. I was out yesterday. I filmed for the whole day. I caught one tiny fish. I didn't make a video with it. I said, you know what, Clayton? Uh, people want to see the, the highs and the lows together, I feel like. So sometimes even I don't catch big trout, not gonna lie. It's a struggle bus, which I was on. But anyways, jump in the outbreak, 450, and uh, make it happen. I'm excited, let's do it. Okay, we are dropping down. So when I said I didn't catch, catch anything yesterday, I went out all day, three o'clock, caught one little fish. I said, you know what? I'm not feeling this spot, this location. Packed everything up, went and set my shack up in another area, sledded to my truck, got supplies, which is a pretty long sled ride, I'm not gonna lie. Got new supplies, spent the night. Yes, I sleep in my truck quite often, that's what I do. And then headed out this morning in search of a big laker. This was gonna be a three-part series three-part video but I already scrapped yesterday's video when really realistically I should have just turned it all into one but just know that I caught one small lake trout yesterday and that was it I caught so few lake trout I could wear the same hoodie again as yesterday because I didn't slime that one up at all I've already got a fish chasing me I had some small guys around me yesterday but I just I when I'm on a hunt for a big one I tend not to use a lot of small baits. I tend to stay with the bigger baits and wait for those bigger fish to come around. And yesterday there was just no big fish that came around. There's another fish coming in there too that looks decent actually. It could be, it could have been the same fish. I'm uh, not sure. I'm, I'm adjusting to everything right now. I think it was the same fish. Anyways, yeah, short story long, long story short. Long story short, yeah, long story short, I did horrible yesterday and hopefully we're gonna do better today and tomorrow. We're gonna try for sure. Oh, what's that, what's that? That's bigger fish, that's a bigger fish. I just chased that little one away, I feel like. That definitely is a bigger fish. Here it comes too, here it comes. That's bigger than the other one. That's an aggressive fish. Come on, that's a big fish. Oh, come on. I'm not recording the underwater camera yet. I feel like it's gonna eat it on the way down. I got, I'm not recording the underwater camera yet. I just put it down. Oh, that's a bigger fish. Come on, yeah. Eat it down in the dirt. Eat it down, eat it. Eat it. Eat it in the dirt. Come on, baby. Steve Button. I'm not sure how big. I just know bigger than the other one for sure. And yeah, I feel bad. I don't have the underwater camera recording yet for these shots right here. Actually, it's pretty dark down there anyway. Stay buttoned. This is, if you're going to lose a fish, generally right here. I am going to possibly pull that camera out though, since it isn't recording at all right now. I'm not sure how big. I'm not sure how big. It's not tiny. It's not tiny but I don't think it's huge. Oh, my drag is so tight right now. Come on, baby. I, I need it to run so it burns some energy because I don't need to like horse it up completely. I want it to burn energy. Oh, wow. Are you kidding me? It's literally taken five minutes, five minutes of fishing. I had that smaller fish messing with me and I saw a flash down there, this bigger one. It totally chased that one away. You could tell it was aggressive and then it didn't eat it on the way up, which is surprising, but it ate it down in the dirt. Not a great big one, just a nice, decent fish. 
Nice, decent fish. Oh, come on. Easy, girl. Easy, easy. I love when it moves that water in the hole. Oh, come on, come on. Just make your, take your time right here. It's a nice one. It's a nice one. Take your time. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, that's a gooder right there. Gooder, easy, easy, easy. <laughs> oh, it's maybe a little bit bigger than I, I was uh, playing it out to be. It's like, it's still not a giant, but it's big. <laughs> okay, hook is out. We will bring it up, show it off, measure it, and then dump it back. <laughs> oh, that's a fat one. <laughs> Oh, that is a great start to my day <laughs> after going all day yesterday with catching one tiny one. That feels good for sure. We got, so I got, I got text messages. Cindy's probably making sure I'm up 39 and a half. Okay. 39 and a half inch blimp. That's a fat one. Amazing. Okay. We'll get you back in. We will get you back in. Wow. Oh, she's so charged up. <laughs> okay. <sighs> that was epic. Epic, epic, epic to watch that fish come in, chase a smaller one around, and then boom. <sighs> Good start to the day. Middleman chartreuse tube jig from Send It Outdoors. And I have a little willow blade on there. He makes jig heads that are two and one ounces with a wire that you can put a treble on it for a stinger hook but i don't put the stinger hook on i put the willow blade on for an added added action down there boom good start got a couple fish around here right now but that fish just like this one here it took it to the bottom i ate it at the bottom i don't catch all my lake trout jigging up high like them chasing sometimes yes you catch them when they're they're chasing but sometimes like this you just put it down the bottom and you just hardly hardly move it sometimes you just like literally like just moving that head of the jig up and down a little bit like you know like i'm talking like not even inches i'm talking like centimeters where i'm just like kind of just popping it up ever so slightly and then sometimes even i'm like it's i'm trying not to move the jig out of the mud i'm just trying to make it like it's struggling like it's walking down there and that's how I caught that fish. They come there, they, they 45 degree angle to it, they suck it up, and then, yeah, the rest is history. Do I catch Lakers chasing up all the time, but I also catch them dropping down on the bottom. And the odd time you catch them just dead sticking it, but usually, when I say dead sticking it, I mean like dead sticking it like two, three, four feet off the bottom. But usually when I dead stick it, I plop it right down on the bottom. Believe it or not, lake trout are scavengers. They they really are. This guy just picked it up on the bottom as it was down there. I'm not really worried about catching him. So I wasn't going to set the hook. He's a smaller one. I'm not. Like, as you saw how quick that big one came, came in there, that little guy was kind of chasing me around right after I got the camera set up. And out of nowhere, like, this big fish just chased that little guy away. And it can happen so quick. So that's why I don't like to mess around with the smaller ones all the time. I prefer to like shake them off or don't set the hook on them, etc. Etc. I should probably respond back to Cindy. Little guy. It's been fairly dead seas down there. I've seen a couple decent fish come by, but not bite. So I went to a smaller tube jig right now just to see if maybe if a bigger one comes by he wants something a little bit smaller they didn't even really engage with the tube at all the one i had down there they just swam right by so we'll we'll try something smaller my only concern about that is is that fish like this size here probably won't leave me alone until i i catch them so if i have a bigger fish in the area look at if i have a bigger fish in the area then I'm likely going to have these small guys. Look how fast they are when they go down, too. I'm likely going to have... Look <laughs> how like, hard it is to hook those things sometimes with a single hook like that. I'm uh, likely going to have these ones mess with me longer because it's a smaller bait that they can handle. 
These ones are definitely easier to catch once you see it. They just plain old missed it. You just missed it. <laughs> need a little spoon. They'd eat a little spoon instantly. They're fun to watch, that's for sure. Hopefully we can get a great big one to eat this high up. That'd be pretty cool. I have had fish in the past eat this high up and even had some shots earlier this year like that too with a couple 40 inchers, one that stayed buttoned and one that actually came off, but I ended up catching that fish lower. <laughs> oh, I'm not, not trying too hard to catch this fish. I'm not gonna lie. Fish here. I was actually looking at one on the left and this one on the right or just showed right up on it. Looks not bow. Oh, I was just about to set it and he released it. I like that rod to low just a little bit before I jack him. He ate it as it was falling. I don't think this is a small one. It's not tiny. It's not huge. It's not, it's definitely not as big as the other one I caught today, but it's uh, a big enough one that's fun to catch for sure. Not that they're not all fun to catch, but the, the small, small ones that don't pull any drag aren't as exciting. This drag's pretty tight on this fish, too. That's fun to watch them down there just freak. I was, I was actually looking at a fish on the left, on the bottom, and this thing just appeared right on my jig all of a sudden. I feel like I should loosen my drag a little bit at the same time. He doesn't feel like he's going to break anything. Uh, I'm going to loosen a little bit. He is feeling like he's... You get to that, what feels like a breaking point, right? Where they're pulling, they're pulling, they're pulling. And it's like, if you don't loosen the drag, that's something's going to give, right? Like, you don't want that. You don't want something to give. It must be a little bit bigger than I thought. I'm also on my other rod, which is the Mr. Big. The first fish I fought with a slugger, which is a lot heavier uh, rod than this one. This is dogging pretty heavy. You can see down there still another water camera once in a while. He's just swimming, swimming, swimming. Okay, and now we're going to give it to him. When they're not running and not fighting too hard, you should try to definitely coax them up. Put some, put some heat into them. I'm thinking it's going to be like a, a 33 to 35 incher maybe, something like that. I wonder if it's that big even. It's fighting like it is. I just I'm not convinced it is from what I saw with the, the the fish on the underwater camera. It's always a little trippy though. Ah, it's bigger than I thought. It just so because you can see so far down, like the underwater camera can see like 20, 30 feet down almost. So fish seem a little bit smaller on the camera than they probably are, right? He's a little bit bigger than I thought. We're into our, oh yeah, that's a nice fish. That's a nice fish. I will take a fish like that any, any day. He's got that small tube jig, the bite size. Come up here, girl, boy, whatever you are. Come on, yeah, keep coming, keep coming. Don't grab the line. He can almost turn himself around. So it's not huge, huge, that's for sure. I'll take a fish like that any day it's like a 34 maybe 35 incher i'm not going to even uh measure him just because it doesn't really matter to me that much i'd rather just get a good healthy release on him he had so much strength and the more i felt like i'd go to, if i took him to the measuring board i'd have a chance of dropping him so i just wanted to get him back as soon as possible and he's going all the way down i saw him right right there all the way back down to the bottom. Well, nice fish. Like, like I said, 34, 35 inches. And that one was on the glow bite size right there. That one, he hit it more of a dead stick. Well, I was moving it slightly, but four inch tube jig, glow, bite size, send it outdoors, good jig. Oh, and for size of jig, it's a, it's a five eighths ounce for a lead head. Oh, decent one. Decent one. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Come on. Come on. No, it leveled. Oh, it still might bite. It's like... It's like... It's... That was cool. That was cool. Not huge. Oh, it ran right into the... It's not huge, but it's a nice one. It's like a, a, a lower 30s. <laughs> I kind of wanted to burn some energy, so I'm loosening the drag a bit here. That was so cool. Oh, good day so far. It's not quite noon. We, this is our fourth fish hooked. I was on my phone on that one, I'm not going to lie. When uh, it gets a little bit slow, you tend to uh, spend a little bit of time on your phone and laker, laker fishing, it feels like. Okay, what do we got? Come on. Get over here. I think it's time to bring you up. He keeps hitting my pole. Nice fish. Like I said, about a lower a lower 30s. He could turn himself in the hole. So I'm going to try to get her up right here. Okay, we got him. We got him. Well, what a change from yesterday to today. A nice, like, probably 30, 32, 33 incher. It's fun to watch it eat on the underwater camera like that. I, oh, I was going to drop it back down when he leveled, but he all of a sudden turned again and started coming back up at it. If they level and they start to point down, you're best just like to open your bail and free fall that jig and they'll chase it pretty hard and they'll eat it a lot of times it's falling. But when he leveled, he all of a sudden decided to come back up at it again. Yeah, maybe a switch to a smaller jig will uh, be good for some of the bigger ones that come in and weren't as active. We shall see. So yeah, 1052, which is pretty good. Four Lakers, considering I caught one all day yesterday. How fast things could change. Now we could completely shut off the rest of the day and I could potentially not catch another fish all day. But the move clearly paid off. And I said I tend to spend some more time on my phone, probably Laker fishing and any other type of fishing just because you have a lot more lull periods it feels like you go sometimes two three hours with nothing coming around is always a good time for me to go through youtube comments and find some questions that i might ask for or answer in the segment that i'm going to do and all that type of stuff so things are good no complaints at all i'm i never had much for breakfast so i'm, I'm waiting to have lunch here as long as i can but i'm having uh brisket today <laughs> and everybody will know how uh, I had a video this year where I dropped the brisket down the hole. Well, today I'm going to do the same thing, but in 60 feet of water. Actually, I'm in 45 feet of water. So here we go. Oh. I'm just kidding. There's no way I'm dropping this down the hole. If this went down the hole right now, I would cry because... I've looking, been looking forward to this lunch for a while because I'm having brisket on a bun with uh, some, I brought even brought some barbecue sauce too. We're going to spice it up a little bit. So I'm pretty excited for this. I'm not going to lie. Uh, you know, the whole saying, you got to risk it for the biscuit. Well, my, my saying is you got to risk it for the brisket. Maybe I'll get some shirts made. Risk it for the brisket, I think. I think that's what we're going to do. Some risk it for the brisket shirts. Dropping down. Here's a, a fish coming here it comes here it comes oh yeah oh boy oh, that's cool oh come on come on come back come back that's right i'm debating to drop it but it's not big enough to it's that's a nice fish but i'd rather just try to catch this one on the underwater camera i think than anything that's cool oh here it comes oh it falls charged it it's so funny how sometimes they act like a rainbow. I find, oh, I was just about to set it, but it, he, he dropped it. He's going down, so I'm going to go down and try to match him, see if I can get him to follow it. Okay, there, he sees it. Now we're going to go, we're going to make him chase. We're going to make him chase. Come on. Oh, he turned on it. Turned on it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, that's so cool. I love this view. This view is so cool to watch. Come on. I feel like I could take him all the way down to the bottom and potentially catch him like that. But we're going to try to... Oh, like I said, he just ate as it was falling. But I want to try to catch him as it's going up. Okay, no. We're just going to try to catch him now. No more messing around with the camera. Let's actually just try to, try to, try to hook him and catch him. Okay, he ate it as it was falling. 
Oh, he dropped it. He bumped it. Should I make him chase? I want to make him chase and get it on the underwater camera so bad. Even though it's not the right play. I'll take him all the way down to the bottom. And get him to eat it down there. Come on. Here he comes. Here he comes. He's going to eat it up off the bottom, I bet. Just bumped it. Just bumped it. He's definitely engaging with it on the bottom. Come on. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's fun. I said I'd, I I had a feeling of you know, I had a feeling if I took him down to the bottom, I could get him to eat way down low. Then it's when they're up high, I don't know, sometimes it's just a little bit more challenging, right? Will they eat it up high? hundred percent. But down low in the dirt, they seem to just love that. I had some fun with them up here anyway. That's so cool. Man, watching them head shake like that. Wow, what a good day so far. Like, I haven't even got lunch cooking yet. Great day. Great, great, great day. Where are you, buddy? Coming up here? Gonna come, gonna come see Dentist Clayton? We'll take this hook out of your mouth? Oh boy, wow. That's a lot of power. A lot of power out of you, mister. <laughs> Man, my arm's already sore today. This is good. Definitely not complaining. It's down at 15 feet, and I can still see him on the underwater camera. 15, 20 feet, probably. So I got about 20, a good 20 feet of visibility. I've tried the underwater camera down on the bottom, and it just doesn't seem to get a good, uh, it's not it's a good picture. It's just a little bit too dark down there at 50 feet. But... I feel like too, I get so many Lakers chasing that it's hard to get them on the bottom sometimes with the camera. This one obviously would have worked. It was tight in a small area, but when I get them up chasing, I have a better chance of getting them on the underwater camera like this. I feel like just another nice quality fish. Wow. You going to come up and see me, buddy? Good fight to this fish. Real good fight. I was smart and kept my underwater camera in my same hole as the live scope pole. Less chance of getting hooked when it's in the same hole. And it's just below the ice. I obviously still run a risk of, it, of getting hooked, but if they're down deeper fighting, I shouldn't. It's when they get right here is when I'm going to get it hooked, probably more than anything. But a real big one, I could always pull that camera out too. Geez, that's a nice fish. Another, another mid 30 inch fish probably. Oh, come here. Don't get caught on that camera, buddy. It's fighting right below the hole. Okay, head up. There we go. There we go. Head up. Head up. Lots of burping. I like that. Lots of burping. Lots of bubbles. <laughs> Amazing. Hook out, show them off. Maybe quick measure and back in. Quick show off. <laughs> Another quality fish. I'm going to say 34 to 35. We'll get a quick measure and see. Oh, it's bigger than that, actually. Yeah, it's bigger than that. It's 30, 36 and a half. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, 36 and a half. We're catching some nice 30 inchers today. Now we just need one that's pushing that 40 inch range. <laughs> just fired right up. Awesome day, awesome, awesome day. Well, a little midday update. Fishing is going amazing right now. I'm super excited about the day. Hopefully we get a great big moment to come by yet. Obviously we're still in hunt for that PB of, to beat 44 and a half. But right now we are gonna have some lunch. It's nice enough that I can boil my water outside here. So I'm having brisket from Big Smoke Barbecue. He does ship to Canada now. So I'll leave a link below where you can contact him on Instagram to get a menu. But yeah, we'll uh, get that water boiling. 
and then fire up the brisket in there. Comes, it's a boil bag is what it is. It's already pre-cooked and it's got so many different things. Uh, brisket, burnt ends, mac and cheese, mushroom soup, the, uh, pulled pork. The pulled pork's really good. I haven't done the pulled pork on the channel yet. So many good things and I'm excited to have some toasted brisket sandwiches today. It's gonna be good. Okay, we're gonna build our sandwich toasted bun and grab some brisket here. Oh, it's like butter. So soft. Yes. Oh, man. How good is this gonna be? A couple pieces of cheese on there. That's what we're trying for barbecue sauce here. That's good stuff, I've had it before. Honey barbecue, sweet baby rays. Yeah, right there. Brisket sandwich. We're eating good, that's for sure. Gotta eat good. Lake trout days can be long and challenging. Today's good, but like I've mentioned a few times already, yesterday was painful. Big smoke barbecue. I'll put the logo up right here because I don't have the box with me today. It's so good. Mm, 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 mm. So I've been doing these videos where I've been adding this segment and like answering questions. Not too long ago, I put some questions or I put a question on the community tab. It says, um, what kind of lake trout questions do you have or ideas for lake trout videos? Cheers. That's, that was my question. And I thought, you know what? Why don't I talk about this stuff in some, or some of this stuff in, in this video and probably in the next video too, instead of necessarily going through an old YouTube video, I will uh, actually pull questions from here. Uh, Parkland Angling asks, how do you pick your laker structure? What are things you look for? Okay, so I'm gonna screen record on my phone and use Avenza Maps. This, and this isn't necessarily the lake that I'm on, but I'm just gonna use a map to show you how I would look for some lake trout structure or if I was gonna go fish lake trout here, this is what I would look for. And Athapap obviously has lake trout. This is the little lake. It doesn't get fished much for lake trout, but I guarantee you there are big lake trout on the little lake. It's just something that people haven't put a lot of time in for it. But Angler's Edge has it mapping. So we're gonna pull up the map here. The first thing I can notice is there's this big, deep stretch of, of water here. This gets really deep, right? 120, 127, all that's super, super deep. I'm not going to fish in that, but I'm gonna go fish structure that is closely related to that. So all of these humps that are in here look so good that could hold lake trout possibly burbot too. So we'll pick a random area here, right here. Look at all these beautiful looking humps that top out at 70 feet. It looks like that one may be 75 ish. This one, this one tops out at 30, but there's like a nice little area down here. That's like a little flat on top of it where it tops out at like 63 ish. So what I generally look for are areas, say something like this, uh, what would be a good one? Well, I think this is actually a pretty good one right here. So there's deep water to the left. There's shallower water up just a little bit up to the top here. And then it has like this kind of like a plateau where it's nice and steep up top here and then plateaus and then steep down there. So I have a steep section right here that goes from looks like 63 ish all the way down to 130. And then it kind of plateaus for a bit and then it gets a little bit steeper as it goes from like 55 all the way to 40. So the bottom of those is somewhere where I would set up. If the Lakers seem to be a little bit deeper at that, at wherever I am on that day, like I'm not, I'm not seeing much on that 60 foot area, then you could come to the north side of this island here. Or there's not this reef, I should say, in this 80 foot section in there. Somewhere in there looks really, really good too. So that's usually where I start anyways, is somewhere like in relative terms to where there's deep water access and shallow water access, a little bit of everything. What the biggest reason for that is bait fish are gonna be in a certain depth likely, right? So in that short amount of time, you're covering all of the depths. A big 40 foot flat or a 60 foot flat that goes forever, there could definitely be fish on it, but 
it's a little bit more volatile in the sense of like if there's no bait around that area, the fish probably aren't there if they're not if they're not concentrated on that depth. This you have chance of the fish. If say there's say that day you set up in 63 feet, but all the baits in 40 feet, well, you have a good chance of having the fish that are coming up from the deeper up to the shallower. Just like today, how I not too long ago I had that big lake trout cruise through from the deeper side going over the shallower side. So maybe there's more bait up shallow, and that's where he was headed. Right? It's so hard to know for sure, but I like those plateaus where it's steep, plateau, and then steep at the bottom end there somewhere of that of that plateau that's close up to that steep section. Oh man, the elusive lake trout, LOL. Putting in the time is key, I would say. 100% time is more important than anything else for lake trout. I think my biggest question would be what depths would you start at, and, at during each fishing period? Early winter, midwinter, late winter. Early winter, I'm probably sitting somewhere between that, I'd say 40 to 70 feet. Maybe middle of the winter, I'll fish from 40 to 80 feet. And then later in the winter, again, I'll start to move a little bit shallower from like 30 to 60 feet, six, even 66 feet probably. So 30 to 70 feet. I know it's a pretty good margin in there, but my most consistent depth in the past has been like 65 feet. Today I'm sitting in about 47 feet. So I'm a little bit shallower, but like I said, I was here yesterday and I set up in 65 feet and it was, it was dead seas. So I just decided to move a little bit shallower. If you're, if you go somewhere lake trail fishing and you set up in 65 feet and you have a bunch of action and it's happening, don't change the next day, right? Wait until the fish stops being coming through that area and then make the change. Set up at that same depth. Don't leave fish to find fish. Like tomorrow, I can already tell you I'm coming right back here. If I didn't find anything today or I had a horrible day today, I would set up somewhere else, maybe shallower, maybe deeper, but I'm not going to leave this, this area now. And Unfortunately, I only have one more day tomorrow uh, or else like say if I got here tomorrow and it was really slow then the next day I reevaluate. Re so fish what you were fishing the day before for depths would be a really good way to start. That's the way any guide's going to handle it is they're going to fish what's working and then as it stops working they're going to go search for new areas, new depths, etc. I don't know where to start. Why are they so hard to catch? They're finicky fish. They're not like a pike or a walleye. I've seen them like they can be in the area loaded and they just shut off. They're not eating anything. Or I've seen them where there's not many fish around and everything comes in and eats. Lake trout are one of the hardest species that I fish for in the winter where they can just turn on and turn off just like that. It's insane how quick your, or how small your bite windows can be too. Like this morning, obviously I had a really good bite window from nine o'clock to 11 o'clock. Since then it's, it's slowed out a little bit, right? But that had two hours that were really, really good. And that happens a lot with lake trout. You have your bite windows. I should get another bite window before the end of the day. If I'm not, if it doesn't happen, the bite window could be literally in the middle of the night when I'm not even here. So I should probably do some winter camping for lake trout at some point, maybe this April. What would be your recommended leader weight and length for jigging and dead baits or do you use a similar floral both? I pretty much run 20 pound floral for both for my dead baits and for my jigging. I used to use a little bit heavier for the dead baits uh, I'm running anywhere between 10 to 30 foot of fluoro, just what I tie on for that trip. I usually tie on like 25 feet of fluoro. Right now I got quite a bit for sure, but then as the trip goes and I need to retie, I can just keep cutting and not have to retie at all. I do an FG knot, which slides through all the guides and into the reel really, really easy. If I had a, something happen here where I had to cut the fluoro completely off, I would just do a quick uni uni knot and I'd put on about six, seven feet of fluoro, something that isn't going to go into my reel. It can come through my guides, but maybe it doesn't get all the way into the reel. When do you get to the point of lake trout fishing when you know you have to pick up and move spots? I would say if you spent two days in the same spot and there wasn't much going on, that's when it's really time. Uh, maybe even one day out of, out of a spot, if it's not going on, you should move. Um, that being said, if you've had success in that area before, I would, I, would, I would probably stick it out longer than I would be more willing to just pack up and, and move. If it's a brand new area, maybe a half a day, right? If it's a brand new area that you've never fished before, fish it a half a day. If it's, if it's no good, move. Don't write that spot off yet, but areas you've had success in, be willing to spend some more time there. But areas that you haven't fished yet or had success in yet, I'd probably be making quicker moves. How often do you go out to make a video and come back with nothing? Aquaview views are cool. Um, I've been pretty fortunate for going out and capturing 
if I'm going to video for that day. That being said, yesterday I came out, I caught nothing. Zero. Well, I caught one little fish. I didn't make a video out of it. Um, this being a three-day trip, I was hoping for three videos, right? Three different days. Uh, it could very well turn into just a one video, right? Especially if I catch absolutely nothing tomorrow and there's nothing going on. I'll just put some kind of subtitle at the end of this video. Or even right now, I'll say right here, it's going to say there will be another video or there will be day two or there won't be day two, right? I'll just put that here right now. If it's horrible, I won't put it out. I do put some slower lake trout videos out at times, but as long as there's like, I'm catching something, right? Like a, a one or two, three fish. And we're going to talk about it, whatever, talk about stuff. But generally now it's like I've covered so much stuff in the, in the Laker realm already. It's like, why put out a video where I'm fishing f for small, tiny lake trout and catching nothing? Or why not save that content where we can talk about stuff when I'm catching bigger fish or some more fish or good action or something like that, right? So I'd say one out of every three days, I probably go out and don't have a video, I would say. For sure or where i don't catch enough where it's like good quality to make a video it's lots of time spent for sure when i put out i put out an eight day series the beginning of this year i think i fished for a total of like 12 days uh those eight days were all in a row no sorry it was five days and i took two days off just going to search around a new lake find stuff and then i went and i filmed for three days so i had a little bit of a break in between but yeah that's kind of the, the gist of it. One out of every like three days, I think, is ends up being a wash, especially if I'm going to go try to find a new new spot or search room on a new lake or new area or anything like that. So I've been pretty lucky, though, and nail quite a few videos when I go out laker fishing for the day. Definitely. Oh, big, 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 big. Two big fish. Oh, it, it's just two. It's two nice fish for sure. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Maybe the second one. No, I gotta drop. I gotta drop. I gotta drop. They're both chasing. They're both chasing. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. One of them's got it. I don't know which one. Two big marks came in at the same time. Oh boy. Oh boy. I've been just letting my rod sit in the rod holder more than anything because it seems like that's been drawing them in is when I'm not like super jigging it heavily. Man, two of them came in same time. Those marks look big. I thought I thought at first I was like real big, real big, and then the, it kind of separated. That other fish is still sticking around. This is a serious fish though, for sure. The question is, did I get the bigger one out of the two? Dropping down. I'm on that Dragon Slayer right now. Just a half ounce bait. Just went small for how, how uh, negative they've kind of been. You can hear it's like snowing right now. <laughs> a little bit of a snow. Snow with a little bit of rain too, kind of mixed in. Temperatures are quite nice. Oh baby, this is one of the fish I'm sure I've been waiting for. Oh yes, oh, unbelievable. I like having a hub shelter. I can stand up like this and fight. I saw him on the underwater camera for just a little bit, but not very long. Okay, my turn. He's still down right near the bottom. He's like right at the bottom. He's 50 feet, well, 45 feet down. Okay, this one's got some weight. This one feels heavier than that 39 did, I'll tell you that much. Oh, come on. Stay buttoned. He ate it as it was falling. As it was falling, as soon as I tightened up on him, I was like, yeah, he's there, and I just I jacked him. I gave him a big hook set. Big hook set. I like to see him on the underwater camera a little bit. And then I might pull it at some point. Wow. The power of these fish is incredible. Absolutely incredible. Lake trout never get old. 
This being the Mr. Big from Frostbite, 43 inch heavy. It's a good rod for this. Oh yeah, it looks like a shark. Looks like a shark. Oh, that's big. That's a big one. So much power. So much power. Oh, it never gets old. Big fight. Big fight. This is the best fighting one I've had in a while. Earlier this year when I went lake trout fishing, they weren't fighting crazy hard. They were kind of like, you'd hook them and they'd fight a little bit, but they weren't making big rounds. He's burping lots now. I like to see that. I like to see him burp a bunch. That's good. He's burping. Lots of air coming out. It's always a good sign. Okay, I should see him soon. I should see him soon. Oh, oh make me nervous. Man, it's just, I've caught a lot of big lake trout and I still shake. Like if it popped off right now, yes, I'd get over it eventually, but it would still be like a broken heart, right? Oh, that's a big one. That is big. Okay, there's my floral leader. Oh, that's a shark. That is big. Oh, get off of that. He just bumped the camera and the live imaging pole. He came in from the side. Okay, I'd rather he be on that side. Oh, this one's got old grandpa lips. Old grandpa lips. There was two of them around the same size together, which, oh my goodness, no. Get up here. Get up here. Oh, look at it down there just incredible it's 20 feet away so it's not oh he's getting he's getting more and more tired because when he's done i'm able to control the fight a little bit more there he is again i saw him on the underwater camera i look big i haven't really seen him through the ice yet here at all oh yeah you know it's not crazy long but it's an old it's an old fish it's not crazy long but it's a big old grandpa lip fish. Oh, yeah, yeah, come up, come up, come on, baby. Big fins on her. Oh, giant fins on her. Wow, okay, easy, easy. Try not to horse him too much. It's got that hook, the dragon slayer buried pretty good. Turn your head up. There we go, there we go. Oh, yeah, no, stay up, stay up, stay up. Stay up. I gotta switch hands and grab it over here. Stay up. No, 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 no. Up, 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 up. Are you kidding me? Now if I lose this fish, I'll be choked that I didn't go for it better. Okay, that's a big one. Oh my goodness. Oh, we got her, we got her. Oh, that's a tank. Oh, oh hooked right in the top. That's a tank. Oh, baby. Baby, baby, baby. Oh, I'm going to bring it up, <laughs> show it off, and then measure it. But this is, this is a big one. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, it's, it's big. It's actually longer than I thought. Now we could be, we could be close to a new PB right here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, that's, that's big. That's big. Oh, easy girl, easy girl. What do we got? Oh, easy girl. Sit, Chikai. Sit. Get that lift closed. Are you kidding me? It's not. I'm not, I'm not upset. But it's another 40. No, 40, 44. I was going to say it's 44 and a half, but it's just 44 and a quarter. <laughs> a 44, 44 and a quarter inch lake trout right there <laughs> on the dragon slayer okay time out of the water very limited as much as i love to fool around with her take photos all that stuff to me it's more important back in oh my goodness was that ever amazing and she's going where there look at her she's like a rocket already you can just see her outline come on i lose her come on i just saw her you can see the vapor trail of her, like go all the way down. 
right there there she is oh. yeah as healthy as can be 44 and a quarter I thought I thought I thought I thought for a minute I was going to be dancing with the new PB but we're we're short incredible oh man you know I've oh man you know I've always used tube jigs lots and just the way the bite's been I'm like you know what let's go with a dragon slayer quarter not quarter half ounce acme google eye jig swim bait jig right there with the with the dragon slayer it ain't chartreuse it ain't no use oh wow 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 incredible came from the deeper side was moving shallow incredible here's another fish down there but i don't think it's as big i'm uh that fish kicked my butt oh that was incredible incredible this fish is coming up too but it's it's uh oh boy oh boy it's another big one are you kidding me it's another big one it's another big one are you kidding me i was probably it's probably her, that partner to that fish it's my guess <sighs> come on follow it down could you imagine if I got another big one? Oh, here it comes. I bet you it's the partner of that other one that I saw. It makes all the sense in the world. And she's obviously a little bit reluctant, right? But I want to catch you because there's you're gonna be on that same caliber, so you could easily be bigger than another one. Oh, where'd you go? man i think it's gone i think it's gone oh i gotta dry my hands off too they're all slimed up still i said before that my hoodie wasn't lake trout slimed but it is now what a fish what a fish that's uh that's in my top five of lake trout through the ice right there incredible it would have been unbelievable if that other mark would have ate right after. My handle's all slimed up because I grabbed my rod right after I was dealing with that fish. Oh, that's quick. Like, that's in and out. You, you're you not going to find anything quicker than... I guess I didn't have to show them off the second time. I could have just put them back. But it's hook out in the water. I'm holding them. And then on the bump board, show it off. And that's it. Not going outside with them. Don't, don't take them outside for... For other photos right if you're in the shack do a photo in the shack with it right if you're outside fishing for it well then or catch it outside then do the photo outside if it's nice out if it's ugly out and you gotta run them inside that's 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 perfectly fine but i saw a, a video recently there's a, a three-part video on tiktok where the guy was fighting a nice lake trout in part one part two they landed it and in part three he had a a, a different hat on and a jacket all of a sudden so he had time to put that fish down and do whatever. And maybe I've talked about this before. I think I talked about it in a live video. He had time to do all of this, put the jacket on, whatever. So what was the fish laying on the, on the, inside the shack or whatever, just laying there? Like, and I, like I said, I've preached so many times. I'm going to continue pe preaching about it in and out, like as fast as you can. I saw another YouTube video, a minute and 45 seconds the guy spent with the pike. That's not including the time that he didn't that he took out of the edit. It wasn't like a minute 45 straight through where the camera rolled. It was, he caught the fish and then it was like, there was a scene of him, of him measuring it. And then it just cut out for a bit and then it came back on. Like, so how many times did he change his camera battery? battery did he do whatever? Where all of a sudden the fish is out for probably five minutes, right? The, you wouldn't believe how fast 30 seconds actually is when you're dealing with these fish, right? There's lots of times I watch my videos and I get to see the editing and I'm like, 50 seconds i'm like clayton you gotta be better than that i'm like 50 seconds i'm like be better right it starts at the hole be confident enough to hold on to that fish and take the they take the fish out of the hole that way you can put them back down and keep them in the water for that just a little bit longer right be confident in what you're doing I'm not trying to take the enjoyment away from everybody enjoy it but that fish right there i could potentially catch that fish again and that makes me 
excited and happy about it or somebody else could come here and catch that fish too right like that's it's good well the light is fading it was an unbelievable day in the eskimo i can only think of one way to end this video off and that's with a bang so as always don't forget get outside <laughs>